Howdy. How is everyone doing? I've missed you guys, and I hope that everybody is doing well. You might be wondering what has been going on, what's up with the camper, where have I been, so on and so forth, and I apologize that I haven't been here to keep you guys filled in on everything. Basically, um, I, was, I was preparing to move the camper back home, and of course, right as I have things almost ready to go, the new tenants who were supposed to move into the shop bailed out again. So my landlord reached out, he offered the shop indefinitely this time, and I took the offer. He even decided to drop the rent a little bit, which helped me make the decision to stay in the shop. That's why you saw me setting up an extra table. That's why I have a couch. I figure if I'm gonna be here for a little bit longer, I might as well set things up to be more conducive of a workspace and then also just a little bit more comfortable for when there's downtime. We're gonna get right into work this week. I'm gonna show you everything that I've done. It hasn't been that much, to be honest, unfortunately. I got a little bit sidetracked last month with some other things, so I didn't get as much done as I would have liked to. And that seems to be the common, <laughs> the common theme throughout this project, but no more. No more. Today, today we're committing to working and getting stuff done, starting right now. So one thing that you'll notice is I got the windows put back in, and I also got the door put back on. I also got all of the insulation panels adhered back to the walls. I put in a new subfloor that, if you'll notice, doesn't squeak. I have re-secured all of the mounting points nice and tightly. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, oh, I built a new door frame. So a lot of the stuff that I did was basically trying to get it ready to transport. That's why I put the windows back in. That's why I put the door back on. Um, I'm probably gonna have to take those all back off because I didn't put any butyl tape or I didn't properly secure them. I was literally just doing it to add some rigidity and some structure before I moved the camper. As you see, I didn't, I didn't do too much within the last month, unfortunately. But hey, sometimes life gets in the way of your build and you have to take care of business elsewhere. Also, how do you guys like the watermelon color theme we got going on in here right now? I think it's kind of fun. Should I paint the final walls this color? That was a joke. I'm not going to paint the walls that color. Or am I? So now that the interior is almost ready to start being built out, which is really exciting, I want to make sure that I have more or less everything on the exterior that I want to get done finished um, before I start moving to the interior. So that being said, the first thing that I'm gonna take care of is this. What exactly is this and why do I wanna get rid of it? It's a vent and it's a vent for the old fridge. I don't need it anymore. And I noticed that on the interior, there was a little bit of rotting on the wood that helped frame the vent. So I realized that this is just an extra, it's an unnecessary potential source of leaks. So I wanna just eliminate it, take it out altogether, and then I'm gonna lay new fiberglass on top and seal up the hole completely. Now before I went on my Montana road trip, I actually resealed around all of the vents with fresh Dicor lap sealant. So as you can see here, the, the layer of sealant is really fresh and new. So I do feel kind of bad scraping that off, but alas, that's just how it goes sometimes. So it's gonna be a little bit, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to try to get this Dicor off. So I'm gonna use the torch here to try to heat it up. And that way, maybe, just maybe, it'll scrape off easier. At this point, I really might as well just have a heat gun because I feel like a heat gun comes in handy a lot of the time. For something like this, it would be perfect. Instead of worrying about damaging the fiberglass with the heat. Oh, nice. Oh, that works really well, actually. Now that, that looks like an absolute mess. <laughs> oh. Don't want to fall. Oh. 
what video is complete without without a little speech from our friend over there. Look at that, what was once, not long ago, a complete total sticky mess and disaster um, is now nice and clean and sparkly. The vent is gone, all that's left to do is go in, lay some new fiberglass, completely patch that hole. Um, if you remember, if you recall a couple of videos ago, I actually showed you guys how I had a hole in the camper and I went in and I filled it with some marine techs. Now a lot of people were like, no, don't use marine techs, use actual fiberglass sheets. So I went back in and I laid a couple new layers of fiberglass mat on the interior just to add some extra support. So I do have a little bit of experience laying new fiberglass now, but it's still very limited. I've watched a lot of videos, so I think I have a good idea of what I need to get done. Now it's just a matter of, uh, you know, going in and actually doing it. <laughs> I am pretty excited to learn how to lay new fiberglass because once I'm able to do that, and once I have that skill, I feel like the world of possibility really opens up when it comes to working with fiberglass. You know, I could make modifications to the structure of the camper. If I have fiberglass campers in the, in the future, I could also work on them. If I have a fiberglass boat in the future, I could work on that. So this is really just like the first actual step into the realm of working with fiberglass. So I'm pretty excited to get going. So one of the main leak points, I think, was somewhere along here on the belly band where you see how there's two different pieces of fiberglass coming together. This is basically wood that allows screws to drill in from the front of the fiberglass and get supported. So seeing as this is completely just rotted out, I believe that it was probably leaking through some of these old rusted screws. Now this is what it looks like on the outside. You have, I guess this is called a belly band. And right here is actually like this vinyl insert material that goes over top of all of the screw heads. It's cracked right here. This wasn't cracked before, so that wasn't a source of the leaking. Anyways, one of the next things that I'm going to do is I'm gonna remove this entire vinyl insert. I have a new one that I'm gonna put in, but first I'm going to replace all of the wood that looks rotted, and I'm also gonna put in new stainless screws all the way around so I don't have to worry about rotting in the future. Actually, if you look at it, all of the wood pretty much the entire way around the camper, obviously you can't really see that over there, but believe me, all of the wood, mostly everywhere around the camper, it's good, it's still good to go. The only rotted spots are over here by the door. I showed you guys in previous videos, there's like all kinds of issues with the caulking and just like all kinds of holes and gaps around the door frame. So I think that that's why these areas are getting the brunt of the damage. Um, once I get these replaced and all the screws replaced and everything resealed up, we should be ready to go. By the way, this is what that hole that I just opened up looks like from the inside. All right, I guess I'm just gonna go around and remove this vinyl stripping from all the way around the camp. It's crazy because before I ordered it, I didn't realize that it was like a, almost like a rubbery type feeling material because um, it kind of solidifies over time, over the years, and it just becomes this like really brittle, plastic feeling material. So, wow, look at all of those. Look at these screws. Just look how rusted all of these screws are. That's years and years of exposure to the elements. Man, whew. Oh, these ones are just like, these screw heads are so old and rusted, they're literally crumbling. A lot of these are just crumbling. I don't know if these are even gonna be able to be unscrewed. <sighs> they might literally just like disintegrate if I'm, as I'm trying to unscrew them. So it's the same thing all along this side, all old rusted screws, and this one right here is already very stripped that does not bode well for the future. Ah, oh, come on, bruh. Oh no, that is... 
I don't know how that's gonna come out, guys. <laughs> that is not looking good. Man, it's kind of crazy how rusted and just nasty and crusty this entire belly band was. But that being said, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is the last just crusty old piece of the camper. So once I get this out of here, put some fresh new material in, things are gonna start getting a lot better very quickly. There we go. Oh, and it just broke right off. <laughs> oh, <yeah. sighs> this is what happens when you buy stuff that's been sitting outside in the rain for years. I mean, should I really even be surprised right now? This entire damn camper was rusting and falling apart. Oh, come on, man. Ah, this sucks. The next day. So yesterday that whole screw fiasco was just, it was kind of a mess, I was a little bit disheartened. It's just one of those things that I know is gonna be very annoying to take care of. But anyways, enough of that. As you saw, I got a bunch of materials and today is a big day because I'm gonna be attempting to fiberglass over the hole. I'm pretty excited and to be honest, a little bit nervous because this, this is a little bit of a larger hole or opening that I'm gonna be covering than the other hole that I worked on in the past. Pretty new to this whole fiberglass thing. So I went to a marine shop, not, not West Marine this time. I went to an actual like boating shop, spoke to the employees, got their opinions. I watched a bunch of YouTube videos. So I think I have a good plan of attack. It's one of those things where there's a million different ways to approach it. There's so many different methods depending on who you ask. So I was just getting a little bit overwhelmed with all of the different routes that I could take to approach a problem like this. So I did my best to pick the right materials and we're just gonna send it. So as you can see here, there's screw holes all around the perimeter of the opening where the vent flange got fastened down into the camper. Now I was originally thinking that I might just extend the hole all the way around the screw holes, just like cut all of the screw holes out. That way I don't have to worry about filling them. But obviously if I did that, as you could see, I would be making the opening way bigger than it already is, which is also not ideal. So instead, I think I'm just gonna cut out these screw holes since they're already like right next to the opening. And then I'm gonna go back in later on and fill all of the remaining screw holes with a resin. Something about this does not feel right. Something about this is just screaming, don't do it, Jonathan. Don't do it. But we have to. What can you do? Oh, let's not fall off the ladder today. All right, guys, we're committed now. So for the next part, I'm actually gonna be doing a little bit of sanding and I'd rather not get fiberglass dust all over me. So I'm gonna be putting on my Walter White suit. So what I'm gonna be doing is basically I'm gonna take my flap disc angle grinder and I'm gonna go around the perimeter of the opening here and I'm gonna sand down the fiberglass. Now typically for these fiberglass repairs, the fiberglass is much thicker so you would wanna do what's called a bevel. And basically you're trying to create an edge that kind of, um, I don't know how to describe this, but you guys know what a beveled edge is. And the idea is when you go in and layer new fiberglass on top, you make each consecutive piece smaller, smaller, smaller. So that way you could basically create a uniform thickness all throughout the fiberglass. Now that's on a typical repair. This is a very thin fiberglass shell. It's literally like 
maybe a millimeter, two millimeters at most. And so you can't really create much of a bevel per se. So instead I'm just gonna go in and sand off the gel coat because new fiberglass will not bond to gel coat. You have to have exposed fiberglass in order for it to stick and cure. And basically we're sanding off the gel coat in preparation to lay new fiberglass. As you guys saw, I ended up having to sand all the way past the screw holes because I initially sanded just before the screw holes and it just didn't look like there was enough surface area for the new fiberglass to grip onto. So I ended up um, sanding past the screw holes. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make some of my resin and I'm gonna go in and fill all of the little screw holes with some resin before I lay new fiberglass mat on top. So I was gonna go in with masking tape and cover up all of the holes from the underside so the resin doesn't just fall right through. But it looks as though the styrofoam insulation is pretty much everywhere that there are screw holes. So I don't think the resin should be globbing through and dripping into the camper. I don't even need the suit anymore, really. I'm not sanding anymore. Probably not the best idea to take your Tyvek suit off while you are standing on a ladder, but uh, we're doing it. We're doing it carefully. Whew, man, that feels good. All right, so since I'm going to be using the same resin to fill the holes as I'm gonna be using to lay new fiberglass mat, I'm just gonna have everything prepared and ready to go to fill the screw holes and also to lay the new fiberglass mat before I get going. That way I could just like boom, 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 get it all done and not have to stop and worry about the resin, you know, curing too quickly or whatever. I mean, it's kind of, it's pretty cold, so I don't think I have to worry too much about the resin curing too quickly, but you never know. So I'm just gonna have everything ready to go. Starting with a nice wipe down with acetone. The next thing that I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna go onto the inside of the camper and I'm gonna cut out a piece of insulation board that's gonna ultimately end up right there where there used to be a vent. But I'm gonna do it now because as you would imagine when you're laying new fiberglass, especially on an opening up top, um, it has the potential of sagging down. So what I'm gonna do is take the insulation and I'm gonna mount it with some masking tape to the ceiling so that way I have a nice solid surface. So when I lay the new fiberglass mat, the fiberglass mat will have a mold, so to say, and it doesn't just like fall in and sag in the middle. Oh. See that? It's still moving ever so slightly, which means it's not pressed up there as flush as can be, which is not good. We need it on there flush. All right, I think that should work. This is the fiberglass that I'm going to be using. It's a chop strand mat. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and basically just trace all the way around the perimeter of the matting, or not of the matting, of the, uh, where I have sanded, basically. While I'm at it, I might as well just mark where the hole is as well. notice 
this. The middle sheets here are a lot, you can't, you can't really tell in the footage, but it goes from basically here to here. The middle sheets are a lot smaller than the outer sheets. And the reason is because, cue elevator music. As you'll see here, that's pretty much the pattern that I'm following. Since I wasn't really able to do an actual like bevel on the edges, there's no need to kind of like concentrically downsize and build up layers that way. You know what, this is, this is my first time working with fiberglass. I'm gonna just stop trying to explain things like I know what I'm talking about because clearly I'm just rambling on and you guys probably have no idea what the heck I'm saying. So instead, I'm just gonna go for it. This is the resin that I'm gonna be using. It is a polyester resin and I was gonna use epoxy, but the epoxy was like double the cost. So I don't know if there's any benefit of actually using epoxy. I've got these nifty little mixing cups that have uh, measurements right on it. So I don't have to use a scale or anything like that, which is pretty convenient. So we're just gonna get right to it. Per ounce, 18 drops per ounce. I have just Wow, that's uh, it's gonna be a lot of drops. All right, so first I'm just gonna go in and fill all these little holes, I guess. And I saw videos of someone doing it with a little syringe, which I think would have been a lot better but obviously I don't have that little syringe. So I'm working with what I got here. Oh, uh-oh. The epoxy is already, or the resin is already starting to harden a bit. I might've used too much, oh man. Oh, that's a total waste. So as you can see, it's already completely solidified. This one, that was a fail. Clearly I used way too much catalyst hardener. So let's give it another shot here. I double checked this time on the internet that I had the right ratio. And it's hard to tell with these hardeners if you're, you know, using, um, if you're trying to count the drops, which I was trying to count the drops, so I guess I lost track of the drops amount. So this time I'm using the actual ounces by, or quarts by CCs. All right, well, I'm sorry if this is a terrible angle, but I'm just trying to get this all going here before things start to harden again. Also my camera died. And although I have like so many different batteries, all of them were dead, I don't know how. Now I'm gonna take my first cloth, my first piece of mat here and just place it down like that. Oh no, no! <laughs> oh crap, dude, are you serious? Bruh, I literally double checked my measurements. I used the measurement that the can said. I double checked online. Oh, crap. That's the entire can wasted. Literally the entire can friggin' wasted. Oh! <sighs> I'm so confused right now. I 100% double checked and I used the exact measurements that were on the can. Like I triple checked. I even went on their website and I confirmed that the measurements on the can were in fact correct. Before I added the hardener, I was like looking at it and like looking at the hardener and just really trying to be as thorough as possible to ensure that that was in fact the right amount of hardener to use. But I don't know what happened. The resin hardened twice as quick as it should have. 
and it was a complete fail. really strange that I have not made a single cup of coffee in the shop. This is the first cup of coffee I've made here. Isn't that wild? Like, what, what am I doing? You know, it's funny because since the shop has always supposed to be, it was, it was always supposed to be a temporary space, I never really took time or effort to make it my own. I never set things up to be a spot to cook or make coffee or do anything, which at this point I might as well have because I've been here for been here for a long time. <laughs> Either way, cheers. As you can see here, um, all of the resin that I applied yesterday has cured now, obviously. So I have this layer of cured resin all around the perimeter where I'm trying to lay my new fiberglass. So the first step is I'm gonna actually just sand all of this down. That way I have a rough surface and the resin cures properly and all the fiberglass gets bonded together properly. So I wasn't really happy with the fiberglass pieces that I cut out either. So I made a new template and I'm going to cut out new pieces of fiberglass mat. I think I was a little bit, I was a little bit hasty with my method yesterday. I kind of just rushed through. I have my new layers of fiberglass here. I feel pretty good about them. I laid them up top. They look, they look good enough. So now we're gonna move on to the dreaded part of mixing the actual fiberglass again. Here goes nothing. Okay, I'm definitely going to need a lot more resin. I was scared to do a big batch again. Well, I'm already just about out of this batch. I'm going to have to go make another one real quick. Ugh. My shoulder is starting to cramp up. That was really lucky. I literally used every last drop of the resin. What happened was towards the last layers, I didn't realize in the moment, but the, the resin that was on the first brush that I was using started to kick and it started to gel up a bit and harden. So as I was dipping it into the resin and trying to soak the new layers, I noticed like it was just going so much quicker. I was like, wow, I already used all of this resin, like what the heck? It seemed to be using a lot more than the first layers. And then I realized like, oh crap, it's it's the brush. It's starting to gel and absorb all of the resin. So I literally had to like get the can and scrape the last bits of resin in there in order to fully saturate the last layer. I thought like, oh man, I'm gonna run out of resin and I don't know what would happen at that point if you only get halfway through a layer before you run out. Anyways, it's done. To me, it looks it looks decent. Now, it is a little bit indented because what I have, the backer board that I have pressed up against it, obviously it's not like completely flush. So I'm either going to probably go on the inside and add some layers on the inside, or I'll 
after this cures, I'll sand it and maybe add some more layers to the outside. I don't know, or I could do some kind of like Bondo to fill in the gap. I'm not exactly sure, but the first step is done and fingers crossed that it cures properly. Well, some of these screws are like absolutely just screwed. <laughs> I don't, I, I have no idea how to remove them. They're completely rusted, but not only that, but they're just like almost just falling apart. Like there's no screw head anymore there. I don't even understand how they got to this condition. But that being said, I'm just going to move on for now and I'll get back to this part later on in the build but I'm reaching out to you guys out there because a lot of you have a lot of experience and maybe one of you has an idea how I can get all of those just destroyed screws out of there without like cutting them out or something. I don't know. I genuinely am stumped and I'm hoping some of you guys have some insight, but for now I'm gonna move on to removing some other screws. Settle down, boy. Look at this over here. This is how it originally looks before any of the screws get changed or it gets cleaned out at all. And this is where I cleaned and changed the screws. As you can see, it looks way better. Even though there's still some residue and little old rust spots, it looks a million times better than over here. Now some of you out there might be saying to yourselves like, what a waste of time, what are you doing? Who cares? Rusted screws let in water. I feel a lot better having fresh new stainless steel screws all the way around rather than some old, crusty, rusted out screws. Um, I'm also going to be removing all of the old silicone or whatever type of caulking they have on the edges of the belly band. And I'm gonna be re-caulking that with some new fresh Sil not silicone, some kind of to be determined uh, caulking material. But anyways, I'm actually unfortunately out of time for this week's video. So I'm gonna end the video here and all of these other projects that I'm working on, you'll see in the next video and I'll hopefully get them done. But before we end the video, let's, let's just take a peek at the fiberglass that I laid and just check out how it's doing. It doesn't look pretty right now, but it came out. It looks like it's it's solidified nicely. Everything seems to be solid. I guess I won't know for sure until I give it a little bit more time and they'll come back and really, you know, thoroughly examine it. But so far, I think it's looking good. I probably am going to go in and fill the indentation with either more fiberglass or some kind of like Bondo type filler material. I'm not sure. But of course, once all of that is done, I'm gonna go over it with fresh gel coat. Um, so it's ugly right now, but I have faith that come next week, it's gonna look pretty much just the same as anywhere else on the camper. All right, I think, I think that's gonna do it. Thank you guys, like always, for watching. You guys go out there, go on some adventures of your own, live life, beat the status quo, yawn on the drill. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.